Good morning. I'm Grace Krennican, General Manager at BART. Thanks for joining us here this morning. Um, I'm very pleased that our two largest unions have uh, ratified the contract. Over the last 10 days, we at the district have been very quiet, uncharacteristically so, in order to allow the unions to work with their union members and do their communications. Now that they have voted um, on the contract, it now moves to the Board of Directors, and I would like to present some of the facts related to the contract. The new contract will allow us to better control our scheduling and our attendance at BART. It will help us control overtime costs and make changes to the equipment and technology to run a better BART, something we haven't been able to do in a very long time. The package is projected to cost the district about $67 million over the four years. We know that a 1% wage increase cost the, per year cost the district about $33 million, so this is a net 2% increase to the district um, over the next four years. The agreement will allow us some cost sharing with our unions in important ways. The workers will pay 4% of their pension. They will pay the equivalent of 9.2% for their medical insurance. Going forward, the employees must work 15 years instead of the five years we have currently in order to vest in lifetime medical at BART. The district will realize some short-term savings from this, but will also help us for the long-term sustainability of the agency, which is so critical to these negotiations. As you can see from the charts, workers were awarded over 15% wage increase over four years, which I said before is a net 2%. This is because of all of the uh, other payments that they need to make. This makes the, the package affordable for the district and still puts money in the workers' pockets. Our hardworking employees will see a decent wage increase and the agency will benefit from an updated work environment that takes advantage of the rapid changes, changes we have in uh, technology and equipment. This is something we've not been able to do before. If the BART board approves the contract, the fiscal year 14 budget will be adjusted in January to reflect the many puts and takes of the contract. I'm very sorry for the inconvenience that these negotiations have caused the Bay Area. The critical nature of these negotiations really has to do, as we've always said, with the long-term 40-year future looking ahead at BART and our ability to manage not just our costs, but the work and the ongoing investment that we have to make as a district. So it's been critical for the Bay Area to stand by our side, and we're very grateful to them for doing that. At the same time, I want to be clear, we're very sorry for the inconvenience we've caused them throughout the strikes. Paul Overseer, who is the head of operations, our assistant general manager for operations, will now talk a little bit about the work rules. Paul. BART's new four-year labor agreement lays the foundation for continued reliable service for years to come. As you know, reliability is our brand, and this contract will help us to modernize our technology, streamline operations, and reduce waste, all of which will help BART keep pace with change and also to maintain our signature reliable service. BART and its unions have reached agreement on tough issues in this negotiations that had remained unresolved for years. These changes will save the riders and taxpayers money. In operations, we will carefully monitor uh, our operating costs and work closely with the budget department at BART to quantify the savings from this contract and to make sure that we get the benefit of this bargain. The most significant change in this agreement has to do with the so-called beneficial past practices clause we were able to nego negotiate significant changes in this language. In the past, this language has hindered, hindered BART's ability to fully implement new technology and equipment. Going forward, we will still consult with our unions and workers about the impact of these changes, but the language will allow us to adapt new technology and new equipment and implement it more quickly. No more roadblocks to communicating electronically instead of by fax, machine, or handwritten notes. This new language will allow BART to make the most of new and improved technology and equipment. 
Whether it be the new rail car fleet of the future, the use of wireless handheld devices by our maintenance personnel out in the field, electronic job assignment bidding by our employees, or the introduction of some other new piece of equipment that either improves productivity or the quality of our product, changes in the beneficial past practice clause of this contract represent a significant step forward for BART and its riders. <coughs> Management also gained the right to schedule work for our maintenance personnel working on projects as either five days a week, eight hours a day shifts, or four ten shifts. This change will allow us to manage and better meet deadline for these projects, things like the rail car floor replacement, mainline switch replacement, and escalator rehabilitation projects. Attendance should also improve because employees in ATU will no longer be allowed to take unpaid leave during the work week and then make overtime by working on their days off. By closing this loophole, BART will save on overtime costs by encouraging workers to come to work on their regularly scheduled work days. With that, um, we'd be happy to answer any questions, either Grace or Carter Mao, our head of budget, or myself. Thank you. Questions? Can, can you talk a little bit about the new technology? Um, what are the, you speak about new rail cars? You, you did all about new, the new rail car. What can you be more specific about what these cars will look like? What they'll be able to do, and why why you feel they're so important to have? Well, the new rail cars really represent the future of BART, and the language that we were successful able to negotiate in this contract will really allow us to take advantage of the new technology that comes with the rail cars. It will allow us to fully implement and fully make use of the latest and greatest in technology, things like wireless communication regarding the status of the cars back to our shops, automated announcements. All of the features of these new cars, which represent a giant step forward uh, in terms of compared to what we operate today, will be able to take full advantage of as a result of the language in this contract. I think it's important to note that the contract itself has a clause in there which says uh, that we can make changes in the way we do our work rules except by m mutual agreement only. So when management tries to manage in the old contract, we were only able to do it with the union's approval. So management never really got to manage under the old contract. This was an essential provision for us to move forward over the next 40 years and let management help shape where we need to go. We will meet and confer with the union on the changes that need to come forward, but as technology improves, we need to improve with it. And this allows us to sit down, work through the items with the union, but still make the decisions to move ahead. That was the critical gain we got in this contract. We have a very um, outdated contract, and you can only make so many gains in each contract, and it's important for management to do that, and that's what we did. Grace, um, the uh, uh, union said despite the overwhelming uh, approval of the tentative agreements, there is a huge rift between the workers and management because of the negotiations and how contentious they were. What are your thoughts on, on going forward and improving the relationships with the, with the unions and the workers? Um, well, we were, if you back it up a little bit, we were willing to talk at the end of the federal mediator's participation, which, you know, it's questionable as to where that left us, but um, we've always been willing to talk. It was the union that walked out, and if the union is interested in talking, uh, we definitely are. Um, we also have a monthly meeting with the union presidents. Uh, those will start up again in December. And the contract calls for several committees to be established to discuss issues that are important to the unions. We'll all take full advantage of that to help communicating. I think it's important to focus on the work, but it's also important to focus on the individuals there and we've got a great workforce, as I've always said, and I think we'll continue to work together very successfully. Everyone has to get through this time, but, but I think we'll do it. And Grace, when might the board vote on this? And then also I just want to clarify, as ATU said this morning, their understanding is that AFSCME also has to ratify the contract. Um, the BART board will vote on this, not this coming week, but the week after. We're scheduling a meeting with them, probably as we speak. Um, and then AFSCME has its own contract. Its contract is different than ATU and SEIU. 
that's been one of the difficulties of this contract is that some of the provisions between the two unions were all were tied together. So we had to deal with two unions at the same time, and they didn't always get along. So that may be a question for them, but do you know when, when they're scheduled to vote? Uh, Ask me is going to take 30 days to review their contract. So 30 days from last week. Any other questions? So can you just talk a little bit more about some of the technology? You mentioned what would be on the new train, but can you be a little more specific about um, what you what you are looking forward to implementing in the near future? Well, I'll give an example, um, and, and this is an example where we actually were able to get mutual agreement. As Grace mentioned, the, the problem with the beneficial past practices language is that it requires mutual agreement. So we introduced floor scrubbers, right on floor scrubbers, where uh, our, our station cleaners ride these machines through the stations and they do a good job of cleaning and polishing the floors. Now we were able in this case to get mutual agreement with the union to implement these floor scrubbers. However, they could have said no and under the beneficial past practices clause of our contract, by saying no, they could have prevented us from implementing this new equipment. Um, it's new equipment for BART. It's not new equipment for the rest of the world. So um, the fact that we no longer need to have mutual agreement uh, for new equipment or changed equipment and technology really opens the door up for us. I want to emphasize, as Grace said, that this doesn't mean we just ramrod these things through. We still talk to the unions and the employees about the impacts of the new equipment but at least we're not blocked at the get-go from taking advantage of things that the rest of the world has been using for years. And how did they clean the floor before? By hand, with a mop and a bucket. I'll give an, one other example of handheld wireless devices. You know, our maintenance personnel are out in the field. They're inspecting. They're doing preventive maintenance procedures. Uh, in the track, escalators, uh, all over the system. It's, it's a huge infrastructure. Um, we have had issues in the past with being able to take advantage of what is a relatively common technology throughout the United States, and that is handheld wireless devices in which the results of the checks, the results of the PMs are transmitted um, wirelessly to a central computer instead of being written up, given to a clerk who then types it into a computer. So these may seem like mundane examples, but these are the sort of day-to-day -day things that really impact the efficiency of the operation. And it, we feel it really sets us up for success going into the future. And not just management, but the employees and the whole organization. And ultimately, you know, a successful future is good for the Bay Area, it's good for the riders. I think also it'll help us with safety. We'll be able to automate our safety inspections, automate information that comes in, and then be able to analyze it. One of the things we've been prohibited from doing is is keeping up with just the use of the computer uh, at BART. And by uh, being able to measure things, by being able to record information in a modern technology, if you will, we'll be able to do that. Also on a safety side of things, we've got some of the committee work that we've established, joint committees, will help uh, issues come forward uh, to, that, to that committee so that they can be elevated quicker. And I think that's something the unions were asking for and we were able to give them. So. A lot of people hear new technology and they might think that long term that means fewer workers are needed. I think what you should think through, think about is old technology. We haven't been able to implement old technology here. People use the computer, we use the fax machine. People use email, we use handwritten notes. We really are talking about being able to put old technology into account. You have no idea how antiquated this contract was. When I first got to BART um, and People were talking to me about various procedures and processes we have here, and I would ask questions about them. I would get this answer back, well, that's not the way we do it at BART. Well, that's not the way we do it at BART. Well, that's not the way we do it at BART. And I finally took to saying, you do know out in the world it is done other ways. And sometimes there were these shocked looks on the face like, really? Because we, we got established in 1972, and everyone's stuck in 1972 in a lot of ways. And our contract is stuck in 1972. And what we fought for in this contract was the right to modernize and the right to move ahead. And I think it doesn't translate. I think the Bay Area was a little shocked at the, as we, we slightly, but at the dollar amounts that were on the table. But those were mitigated with contributions from the workers. From a financial point of view, we got money back on those things to help us share with the risks coming ahead. But we also got these work rules, which you, which you would be stunned at the ridiculous way this place operates. Um, 
because everything has to get the union's permission to introduce new technology. So it's not, it, I don't think we're looking at eliminating workers' jobs at all. What we're looking at is modernizing the work that we're doing here and we'll receive some dollar benefits from it, but we'll also receive some productivity and, and let them, you know, Silicon Valley is so close, yet it is so far away from this agency. So we're really introducing the past. Are you going to defend yourself? or no. You've been no. here a while. No. so I, I just want to elaborate. I mean, it's a natural question to ask. You know, we t management talks about productivity and efficiency, and a lot of times what workers hear is, you know, fewer positions. And that's really not what this is about. Now, nobody can guarantee, you know, what the ups and downs are of the economic cycle and whether we're going to have budgetary problems in the future or not, but what the, this productivity and efficiency is about fundamentally is providing a better product. It means cleaner stations, it means escalators at work, it means cleaner rail cars. We want to reinvest in the system with, with these gains that we've uh, achieved in this contract. It's not about reducing jobs, it's about providing an even better product than we provide today. So uh, Paul's comments also take it. It's about the law. This contract is about the long-term sustainability of BART. And the reason we feel good about it, and there's a lot of reasons to feel bad about the process that got us here, but the reasons we feel very good about this process is because, uh, not the process, but the reason we feel very good about the product is because it will allow us to carry this uh, agency forward to provide services to the Bay Area for a long term, uh, a long, long time. And we've got both the funding in place to do that. Uh, there will be a fair increase in January that was set up last February. That increase will continue to be dedicated to infrastructure investment. That's what we were fighting for. We didn't want to accept a package that would take away from the investment in that system. We got these new work rules. Now what's on us is to manage better. Management, I, I got to tell you, uh, coming on, sorry, Paul, not, not all about you, but <laughs> um, Coming on, I had heard a lot of reasons why we couldn't do things. I heard that we were not able to uh, make some of the improvements. I, I asked why we couldn't do this, why we couldn't do that. And the answer I always got back is, well, the unions won't let us. It's in the contract. Well, I think the union members are interested in moving forward as well. The changes we got will allow us to do that. And then management needs to accept its responsibility to move forward and manage better, to do performance evaluations, to automate information, and to do some analysis itself, and to provide information back to the unions to explain to them in detail more why we're doing things. I also found through this negotiation that there was a lot of miscommunication and management didn't always have the answers. We had something we wanted to do but we didn't have a good uh, explanation to the unions in explaining the work. So it was a, it was a very uh, tough process to go through but we have obligations on our side, on the safety side, on the management side to offer back that I think the unions will welcome when we come to them with that. Any other questions? The BART board wouldn't uh, uh, approve this? The BART board is, uh, I hope that they accept the contract, but they're elected officials and they will take it as they see fit. I expect them to, I expect them to accept the contract, but that's their job, not mine. Are there any updates on the investigation into the deaths of the two workers? We have been admonished by the NTSB not to say anything there, and it's very painful. The deaths were tragic here. Uh, they affected everyone at the at the district, um, but we're not able to say anything about that at this time. And it's my understanding that the NTSB will uh, have a report available in about a month's time, at least a preliminary report available, which will allow us all to have access to more information at that point in time. How how long uh, can you speak Paul, about how long the simple approval procedure will be um, not in use? Is, I, mean, you, you, I think you said before indefinitely, but is that? It's the, uh, right after the accident, we suspended it, and we've made that suspension permanent. So it's gone, never to come back. Can you explain why? No, don't go back. Please, this is not Okay, yeah. It's, it's, it, you know, it's obviously related to the, to the accident and our perception of the accident and because of the NTSB investigation. And I do want to say one thing about the NTSB. They are the world-class investigative agency for transportation accidents. And, um, you know, we couldn't be in better hands in terms of getting to the bottom of, of what happened as a, uh, in this accident. And uh, 
we've been working closely with them and uh, we look forward to continue to work closely with them and to find out um, from them um, what the what the results are.